All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So I have another installment in my series on controversial Mr. Olympia competitions. So this is widely regarded as the second most controversial Olympia of all time, the 1981 Mr. Olympia. Now, in 1980, that was the year that Arnold came back from his hiatus and controversially won the 1980 Olympia. And 1980 is considered to be the most controversial Olympia um, in the history of the Olympia competition. But 1981 is the year that Franco Colombo won the Olympia. And a lot of people disagree with that decision because Franco had done exactly what Arnold had done the year before, and he had came back from a hiatus. So prior to 1981, Franco had not competed in the Olympia since 1976. So that's about a five-year hiatus. Now in 1977, Franco Colombo competed in the World's Strongest Man competition where he placed fifth. Now that's a noteworthy piece of information because in 1977, Franco Colombo had a horrible leg injury at that World's Strongest Man competition during the fridge carry. So basically there's an event where they carry a fridge and kind of run with it at the World's Strongest Man. And Franco basically dropped the fridge on himself and severely injured and teared some tendons and ligaments in his knee. And it took him a full three years to recover uh, back to 100% after that incident. So that's why a lot of people feel that Franco was severely off in the 1981 Olympia. One, because he had been away for so long. And two, because he had injured his legs. And that is partially why um, a lot of people think that his legs were very, very subpar at this 1981 Mr. Olympia competition. Now, another reason this 1981 Olympia was so controversial was the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger was the promoter of the show and also Franco's best friend. So obviously, there's a lot of controversy about that, having your best friend being the promoter of the show and then Franco just making this big statement of a comeback at a show that his best friend is promoting. So Arnold and Jim Lorimer were promoting this show in Columbus, Ohio. At that time in 1981, it was held in the same, um, the same facility that the Arnold Classic had been held in for many years, the Veterans Memorial Auditorium. Um, so that was the same venue. And the guy, actually, uh, this competition was actually boycotted fr by uh, bodybuilders from the previous year. So like I said, 1980, the year prior when Arnold won, that was the number one most controversial Olympia of all time. And most of the other bodybuilders that competed in that 1981 Olympia were very disenfranchised and upset with the result. So among those were Frank Zane, Mike Menzer, and Boyer Co., who actively boycotted the 1981 Olympia, and they did not participate. Now, they tried to get Chris Dickerson to boycott it as well, but Chris Dickerson decided not to boycott the show as the show got closer um, and he realized how good he looked. He thought he might have a chance of actually winning the show. So Dickerson did compete, but Frank Zane, Mike Metzer, and Boyer Co., who arguably were all pretty much screwed in their placings in 1981, um, they all did not attend and they all boycotted that show. So another another important thing to remember is that Franco was 40 years old when he when he made this comeback in 1981. Again, he was coming off of an injury, a three-year recovery period, and a lot of things to look at when you're looking at his physique at this Olympia. Again, were his legs. This was the first year, really, that we saw a really bad gyno on, a, on the Olympia stage. So a lot of people remember the 1981 Olympia as the first Olympia where, the, where a competitor um, and the winner both had really bad gyno. So that's really uh, one of the trademark things that a lot of people remember about this Olympia because before then, there was never an Olympia winner with any kind of gyno at all, pretty much. There were maybe a couple competitors here and there that had a little bit of gyno, but never an Olympia winner. And it was very, very obvious on Franco Colombo. And again, his legs were very subpar, but there were some good points. He had some decent conditioning. Um, I think his arms definitely improved. He made some improvements um, in the arm department. And that's one of the things he was working on training uh, leading up to the 1981 Olympia. So the placings at the 1981 Olympia were as follows. Franco Colombo in first place, Chris Dickerson in second, and Chris Dickerson would go on to win the Olympia the next year in 1982. Tom Platt's in third. Now, a lot of people think that Tom Platt should have won this Olympia, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we have uh, Ray, Roy Callender in fourth. I just made a video about Roy the other day. Danny Padilla in fifth. A lot of people think that Danny Padilla should have won the show, but I'll get to that later as well. And Giuseppe Wilkos in sixth. So that was the top six. Um, so Franco won. A lot of people thought that was controversial. A lot of people thought that Dickerson in second was controversial as well, because in a lot of the comparisons, the two best guys, in my opinion, and most people's opinions, were Tom Platts and Danny Padilla. Now, like I said, a lot of people think Danny Padilla should have won. Um, Danny Padilla only weighed 160 pounds at the 1981 Olympia competition, but 
arguably he was the most complete and most conditioned bodybuilder in that lineup. But in my opinion, I would give it to Tom Platts. I would have no problem with Tom Platts winning the 1981 Olympia. Really, I wouldn't have any problem with Danny Padilla having won that Olympia either. But Franco Colombo was clearly not the winner of that show. Obviously, there were a lot of politics that played into the placings of that show. Again, Arnold being the promoter of the show. It's really just anybody with a good pair of eyes can look at this Olympia lineup and say that Franco is not the winner. It could be Tom Platts, it could be um, it could be Danny Padilla, but I just don't see the reason why that Franco won the show other than Arnold being the promoter of the show and maybe having the judges in his pocket. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Do you think he should have won? Please give the video a thumbs up. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.